Mara, let's start out with Matilda. Mm -hmm. uh, you dedicated a whole chapter of the book to her. Where did you first meet and when did you first meet Matilda? So I first met her when I was, I think, about maybe three years old. And my mother would often read books out loud to the kids at my brother's school. She had a great actress voice and she'd study acting in college and she was uh, very, very performative. So they loved having her read out loud. So one day I was sick and I couldn't uh, stay at home for some reason. We couldn't find a babysitter. And she took me there and I just cuddled up in the back of the classroom with a blanket and just sat there enraptured as she read from this book, Matilda. Now, she was perfect as Miss Trunchbull, but she definitely had Matilda down, too. She had Matilda's spirit. And I loved the book immediately. I thought that this was great. It was one of the first few books that really had a spirited young girl who was intelligent and brave and you know, and, and willing to stand up for what was right. Uh, and I, I just, I loved her immediately. So my brothers were reading and rereading Matilda for years, and it, it definitely was, you know, one of my favorite books. And then, yeah, a few years later, <laughs> my agent said, okay, you know, we've got this script, we've got this script, we've got Matilda, we've got this script. And my mom went, whoa, 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 back up. Did you say nice. Matilda? Send us that script. Beautiful. Did it feel like a fit right away when you started playing her? It did, you know. I, I mean, in some ways it feels almost like, like, I mean, she is a character that I loved. So I felt kind of like it was, it was, you know, almost like I was paying tribute to her in, mm. in a way. But yeah, I, I immediately loved her and I wanted to be her. And it was, you know, it, it was definitely an honor to be her. A huge honor, um, but you wrote about the fact that people would then sometimes mistake you for M Matilda, thinking yeah. you were one and the same. What was that like? Yeah, definitely. That was kind of like I think it was sort of it was sort of like having an older sibling that you know, and you're always walking in their shadow. Oh yeah. It was a little like that, and I mean, I have three older brothers, and they all you know were very smart and successful in school. So, so I felt that several times over. It it felt like yeah, I was walking in her shadow. People would call me Matilda. They didn't know my name. They knew hers. They didn't, you know, they, they, a lot of times also they didn't remember, a lot of times also they wouldn't remember the message of the movie, which is allegorical about, you know, reading, bringing freedom and, and peace and power. And they would just be like, oh, magic powers. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's, it's, guys, it's more than there's, that. There's a little bit more happening. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, uh, so it was, it was, and I think it was hard, too, because, yeah, it, it felt like everybody liked her more than they liked me, and everybody oh. knew her. And, I mean, it's, in some ways it did work to my credit. Like, I cast as, uh, I got cast as, as a lot of child prodigies after that, right. as a lot of really smart characters. And, uh, and I think sometimes people thought that I was way smarter than I was because... <laughs> because she was so smart. Did you ever feel like kind of ownership over the character of Matilda? A little bit, but I felt more like she had ownership over me. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. When you saw the musical adaptation of it, yeah. what did that feel like? Well, it's such a different interpretation. And so, you know, when people would talk to me about the musical before I saw it, I felt a little bit, I felt a little bit like, and maybe I did feel a bit of ownership because... Hearing about the musical felt a little bit to me like somebody saying, hey, your ex is dating somebody new now. Isn't that yeah, great? Yeah, isn't that funny? You know, like I had to be happy <laughs> for them when I, I wasn't sure about that. Uh, and so I wasn't sure how I felt about the interpretation, and people kept talking to me about it. And the the people who put the musical up, they're, they wanted to keep it separate from the movie, very separate from the right. movie. And I think – and I understand that that's probably because they wanted it to be a much more – British production. A lot of a lot of British people do not believe that the movie was canon because it was American, and Roald Dahl is considered a national treasure there. Right. Which you know I I understand. Uh, <laughs> although they got <laughs> they got an Australian man to write the music, so you know so much for you know being wholly British. <laughs> but they uh, and he's wonderful. I love Tim Minchin's work. Uh, but. I saw it and and I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was good and you know the performers in it were so good and you know there were there were I had you know I had some minor criticisms but then I minor I majored in theater so of course I'm going to be picky no matter what. But it was you know the the little Matilda was so cute and oh. the music was great and and you know I and afterwards I felt a little sad but I was like well I guess I'm kind of passing the torch now. And it was strange because I hadn't felt sad about being Matilda in a long time. That's interesting. Yeah, it was, it was, maybe it was kind of cathartic for me. Well, how much, I mean, you must have been doing a lot of reflecting as you wrote this book. Great Definitely. book, by the way. Thank you. Um, how much, now that you're a grown woman and you look back, how much did Matilda shape who Mara is? Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. The, the book itself, 
Definitely did. And the thing is that I I think that I I definitely share a lot of the same values as Matilda, and I think that's why my mother liked the book so much. She she definitely wanted me to grow up to be strong and to be smart and to question authority when it wasn't, you know, when it was clearly abusive. She she definitely wanted that, and that was definitely a book that, you know, we kind of pushed on mm. <laughs> all the members of my family. You know, nice. girls girls can be strong, girls can be anything. You know, you should study, you should work hard, you should do these things, and and – and you know, and and also the the value of teachers that was something that was important in it. I think another message that is in Matilda that is really great is if you don't have the best family circumstances, you can make your own family. Nice, and that yeah. is and that is something that I wish I wish people because I'm very lucky. I have a great family, but not everybody has that privilege. And that goes to that sense of freedom and, as well. Yes. Um, and your mom uh, passed away when you were very young, mm-hmm. eight years old. Yes. Right when you were rapping, Matilda. Yes. What were you going through? Like, how was that to rap such a big project at the time? And and you're so young and going through such a major loss. Well, I think after uh, shortly after we stopped we shortly after we wrapped on Matilda I started having very bad panic attacks and I think it was because I could sort of ignore the fact that my mother was sick while I was filming but she you know even if she didn't immediately seem to be getting worse she wasn't getting better mm. and that was worrisome to me and I I think that I I started yeah I started having panic attacks over just little things and uh, I started doing things like washing my hands over and over again and repeatedly like checking on my pets to make sure that they wouldn't escape and, uh-huh. you know, and and doing things like that and not stepping on certain things in the floorboards. And I think that was when I started I started really battling. I think I'd always had symptoms of it, but that's when I really started battling with obsessive compulsive disorder. And to this day, you know, there is a lot of that year of 1996 that I can't remember. And it's sad to me because... Matilda, that was the year Matilda came out, and I should have been proud, and I should have yeah. been happy, and I should have been embracing it, but instead, and I think, it, I've, I've looked at, you know, press interviews of myself around that time, and it's just like the light in my eyes is gone. Oh. I'm just exhausted, and I'm I'm so sad, and I think, you know, for a long time, I, I, I kind of took a lot of the things that happened to me in stride, but I look back now, and I think, wow, if that happened to any child that I, I know and care about... I don't know what I would do. You yeah. know, I would I would want to protect them, support them in any way that I can. You know? Even just hearing you talk about her, she seemed like she had all the right things in the front of her mind. But tell us who she was. The the girl that I, I was no, at that age. Your or mom. My mom. Yeah. <laughs> my mom was my mom was a character. She really was. She was a force. I I always imagined her being played like by like Frances McDormand or somebody like that oh, in a movie. Nice. You oh, nice. That, that puts it all into perspective. Totally, totally. <laughs> just she was a very tough woman. She was tiny, uh, and she was and she was really, really tough. And she she had this like steely gaze, and people were intimidated by her. You know, grown men would be intimidated. But uh, I also had so many people say. You know, your mom was my best friend. They loved mm. her. Everybody that came into contact with her loved her. They, she, she worked so hard, so tirelessly. She would, you know, swear in PTA meetings, and she would, you know. <laughs> but, but everyone, everyone loved her. She got results. She was loud. She was passionate, and she was very committed. Her two things were: you have to be strong, and you have to be smart. And those were her core values. You also should try to help people. You should yes. also try to help people. We were we were involved with every charity, every local charity, every nonprofit, every volunteer organization in the area. You know, I think she was technically a homemaker, but she was never at home yeah, <laughs> because she was she was, she was she was taking care of other people all the time. And you know, we would do things like we went to the you know Burbank Temporary Aid Center where you know people could get clothes and food if they needed it. And one day it was closed. And my mom saw a woman and her daughter there, and my mom just said, you're coming with us. And wow. took, yeah, took the, the woman and her daughter in until they could find a place, so they could find jobs, and they could find these things. And I, I, I mean, I just thought it was fun. I played with her daughter. But that was the kind of thing that she did just regularly. What a great legacy. But everybody listening knows how hard teenage years are, puberty, yes. going through that. Here you are, a girl alone mm-hmm. in a house full of boys. Yeah. Mom's gone. And... You're in the spotlight. You don't. Yeah. You don't get to go through your pimply stage alone. <laughs> You've got the no, whole world don't. watching. What was that like? It was awful. I I think back to those times and I just think and and what I most remember is a profound feeling of loneliness. Mm. I I just remember feeling so alone. 
The thing is, though, that everybody knew me, and yet I was I was still so alone. And people kept telling me I wanted to be you. And I kept thinking, no, you didn't. Mm. You might want to have had the things I had, but you didn't want to be me at that age because I didn't even want to be me at that age. I wanted to escape. I wanted to hide. And I couldn't. Mm. I I think that a lot of times when you're going through puberty, you're just like, oh, nobody look at me. I feel awful. Everybody just, you know, yeah. ignore me, leave me alone. And I couldn't do that. I had people commenting on my looks. I had people commenting on my weight, on my face, and and, you know, talking about me. You know, like, you know, saying that I was ugly, saying that I was useless now, that I wasn't cute anymore, uh. just saying cruel things and, and sexualized things about my body, too. And it was so hard to feel like, okay, I'm I'm under this microscope. Yeah. it. You talked in the book, you wrote about this particular incident um, of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Can yeah. you describe that for the listeners? So we actually shot Thomas right here in Toronto. Uh, and that's that's probably why I have... I have such affection for Toronto. I, I, that was a really fun movie to make. It was, it was really, it was a fun time, but I was going through puberty. We had filmed a little bit in the Isle of Man, the British Isles, during the summer, and I, I was, had just turned 12. And then I went back to school in Los Angeles for a while, and then I came back in the fall. And everybody was kind of looking at each other like something was wrong, and I had to have somebody come in and say... Look, you've you've you know you've grown, you've developed. The director of the film had to tell me, and I had that horrible feeling that you get when you know someone's going to talk to you about puberty or sex, you know? Oh yeah, especially <laughs> and, an adult at yeah, that age. Yeah, an Ooh. adult at that age. Yeah, and I was so I was just like, oh oh god, what am I going to do? And they brought out they brought out like these binders, basically these sports bras that were basically meant to bind me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I had to wear those, and I was already wearing a bra, so I kept saying, what does you know, what is that even? I would wear a sports bra, you know? I would. I was yeah. like, why Why are you guys talking about this? And they were like, it's not enough. <laughs> and I felt humiliated, and I felt like I had done something wrong, even uh, though I know I hadn't, you know? You're so uncomfortable with your body anyway yeah, at that age. Yeah, definitely. Did you ever think during that time, I'm, I'm throwing the towel in, I'm just going to give this all up? Yeah, there were definitely times where I was like, why am I doing this anymore? But... I just kind of continued on because of inertia and because it was a constant in my life. Mm. There were so many times that I was just like, I don't like this. I don't like being on sets. I had that, you know, fear of missing out every time I was on a set. What am I missing out on with my friends? Am I missing oh, out on being yeah. a normal kid, on being a teenager? You know, I kept saying over and over again, I want to be a normal kid. But at the same time, film was, you know, that that was my constant. That was the one thing that I knew that I could keep doing. Although then puberty came along and that was a lot less likely. Right. So I've I've always said that I consider it sort of a mutual breakup with Hollywood. <laughs> you know, they weren't they weren't crazy about me anymore and I wasn't crazy about it either. Right. Did you um it still in, felt like a loss though. Uh, I yeah, bet rejection. Well, because even if you are the one who breaks up in a relationship, yep, you still hello, hurt. You're still yeah, in pain. you still hurt. Yeah. People I always find that weird. People say, Well, who broke up with who? Well, why does that matter? There's <laughs> it doesn't. There are some broken hearts happening. <laughs> yeah. In the book you you kind of trace the highs and lows of of becoming what you called accidentally famous. And yeah, I love that phrase. Has writing written writing the book helped you to sort of understand that whole journey better? It definitely has. I think it it helped me kind of make peace with Matilda even more. And I, I think that it, you know, but it, but it did all seem to happen so fast. Things sort of snowballed. Mm. Uh, but the thing is that it, I think, <laughs> yeah, you have to make sense of things when you're trying to make them make sense for other people. Yeah. You know, I think, and I think that a lot of people out there, you know, they, they, I do mean something to a certain subset of the population, especially a lot of young women. And Matilda meant something to them, so they kind of wonder, oh, what happened to her? And the thing is, when people don't know, they make up their own stories. Yes. And so this was kind of, I suppose, in a way, I mean, I, I wanted to write. I want. I always wanted to be a writer. And I've been writing different things for the past few years. I've been writing plays. I've been writing comedy. I've been writing, you know, novels that will probably never, never see the light of day. But this was, I think, my chance to sort of reclaim my own story and tell my own story. Did it, <clears throat> excuse me, did part of it, um, did you want to kind of tell the public that what the tabloids say about childhood actors is not always accurate? Like, were you trying to get a truer story out there? I think so. I think so. But the thing is that I feel like I feel sympathetic to a lot of child actors. I think that they've they go through a lot and I can understand why they have the same problems that they have. I, I think that I, I completely understand it. It's this toxic mix. I mean, it, it made me 
you know, very insecure. I, I always said that I had a kind of Hollywood-induced body dysmorphic disorder, you know, mm. and I'm still very critical of the way I look, even though I don't need to be. It's not my job to be pretty, right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and But I still I still am so worried so much of the time, even though I'm like, well, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> really, reading a book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I write now. It's not, you know, I do voiceover work if I act at all. So it's, it's, but that's something that, you know, I know that I still worry about. And so I'm thinking... Okay, if I, who am, you know, not a partier and have a stable family, can, you know, come out of it, you know, with, with you know, various neuroses, you know, somebody who, who doesn't have that those things mm-hmm. and, and who does have those tendencies is going to suffer and is going to have a lot of issues. Now, in the few minutes that we have left, I guess we have a little over a minute left, I want to go back to what you just kind of said offhandedly about those novels. Yeah. Because you really are a lovely writer. The writing Thank in this so much. book is great. Are we going to see those novels? Will we see more writing from oh, you? Oh, I hope so. I mean, I think that in a way, also, this was a way of, of seeing if people were interested in my writing. And it does seem to be resonating with people. So uh, I love writing dialogue, so I would love to write for TV. That's something nice. that I would love to do. Um, but yeah, I also think I want to write for and about young people also. Uh, there's there's so much that I want to do. It's just sort of a matter of deciding <laughs> which I'm going to pursue first. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing Thank some you. of that with us. Thank you so much. It's been an honor.